Welcome everybody to a beloved location here in Clark County. My name is Nathan Stalby. I'm the director of the Clark County Historical Association. Hi, I'm Jennifer Moore, president of the Mosby Heritage Area Association. As you can see here, we're at Carter Hall, located here in Millwood. And we're also practicing social distancing as we're shooting this video. We're going to give you some behind the scenes looks at the inside of Carter Hall, tell you a little bit about the history, and show you some rarely behind the scenes footage. So join us. So Carter Hall was built in the 1790s. Uh, during the time, this was right after the Burrow Morgan Mill, right down the street, was built. Nathaniel Burrow came up from the Tidewater region and had over 5,000 acres left to him. So he came up here. He married Lucy Page Burrow, who was a descendant, or basically a distant relative, of Benjamin Harrison, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Together between the two of them, from kid, children from previous marriages and children they had together, they had 15 children. So it was a rather large family that was living here at the time once this house was complete. So once Nathaniel Burrell came up here, he turned the focus at the mill, building a mill down there and then building a second mill on the Carter Hall property to wheat and transporting the wheat grind, being ground down at the, both mills they were then lift, sent by wagon down to the Shenandoah River where they were put on barges, sent to the port in Georgetown, and then from there distributed to the West Indies, overseas back to England. There were a number of places where grain ground right here in Millwood were sent all over the place. So this house stayed in the Burrow family for a long, long time. Uh, during the Civil War, a little interesting thing we want to note here, but during the Civil War, while they were here, both Union soldiers and Confederate soldiers had encampments right here on the property. Stonewall Jackson himself had an encampment right here on the property, and George Burrell, who was then living here at the time, asked him if he would like to come inside and stay, have his quarters inside the house, but Stonewall Jackson decided, no, I need to stay outside with my troops. Uh, Jeb Stewart also came into the middle of the night. It was a cold November night, and instead of coming to immediately allow uh, notify Stonewall Jackson that he was here, he instead voted to build a fire and immediately warm up their clothes, which had been frozen. Uh, but the house here, as you can see here, looks very, very different now than it did in the Burrell's time. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, the house itself has gone undergone a number of changes over the years, and Jennifer will be able to talk a little bit more about that. So in 1930, Gerard Lambert and family purchased Carter Hall. Gerard Lambert was, he believed, descended from King Carter, so he felt this was a sort of family dynasty birthright for him to come out here and raise his family. He did do an extensive restoration of this house based on a lot of European and worldwide architectural trends at the time, so it became a very fine home, not just a Virginia farmhouse. So his children uh, included Rachel Lambert, and also during the 1930s they added terraced gardens and did an extensive landscape design here that really informed Rachel Lambert throughout her life. So Gerard Lambert was the son of Jordan Lambert. Jordan Lambert introduced a disinfectant that he named after Dr. Lister. Dr. Lister was credited with the first uh, antiseptic surgical procedures. So Jordan Lambert, of course, gave us Listerine. However, it was Gerard Lambert who lived here at Carter Hall, who was the marketing genius behind Listerine and marketed it for the masses. He used the fear of uh, halitosis for marketing. You're losing out on life. You're losing opportunities. Your children are avoiding you all because halitosis. So Listerine gave the family an influx of wealth. And of course, here we are at Carter Hall, which he purchased. So again, Rachel Lambert, the child here, ended up having her children and marrying and living on the property as Bunny Lloyd at that time. And she continued doing a lot of the gardening and learning a lot of the gardening and landscape design that was going on. Later in a second marriage, she became Bunny Mellon, a name we're all familiar with here. So in 1960, Bunny Mellon and her husband Paul Mellon designed Trinity Episcopal Church in downtown Upperville. Right around that same time, Bunny Mellon, and Bunny Mellon designed the Rose Garden at the White House for First Lady Jackie Kennedy, who was a dear friend of Bunny Mellon's. So we know that Bunny Mellon and Jackie Kennedy came out to Millwood often to antique. She still had a very fond spot in her heart for Millwood and for Carter Hall. 
She actually lived until 2014, still in the Upper Mill area, passing away at over 100 years old. So we did have very recent memories of Bunny Mellon. Yes. I'll pass it back to you. So also I wanted to mention with the Burrow family, the Burrow family stayed in this home until 1929 when John Townsend Burrow then sold it to Gerard Lambert. And you'll still see a lot of people who live here in Clark County, you'll probably at some point have run into some Burrow family members who are still living around the county here. And the Burrow family legacy has continued on for many, many years. So we're also going to show you another part of the house here soon, the East, uh, the east Building, which used to be the kitchen during the, uh, when the Burrow stayed here. That was the kitchen where all the food was prepared. A couple of other things I do want to point out is that at one point, the Burrow family owned 8,000 acres surrounding this land, surrounding Carter Hall. And today, it's only down to just over 200 acres. So over time, land has been sold off, but that's how big the Carter, the uh, Burrow property was in the 19th century. So join us here in a second, and we're going to talk about the East Building. All right, well, welcome to the East House. This is a right to the, obviously, to the east of Carter Hall, and we are sitting in one of the largest hearths that you're ever going to see, one of the largest in the country. This house was originally the kitchen, and uh, all the cooks and the servants who were working in here, this is where they prepared the food. It was kept away from the house for two reasons. One, to keep the noise down when dining was going on and guests were being entertained. The last thing they wanted to hear were loud pots and pans clanking and feeling the intense heat from the kitchen. The second, to reduce any risk of fire to the main house. At one point, Carter Hall had almost 200 enslaved people working here, on, working and living here on the property. Over time, the East House became less of use of the kitchen, and by the time that Gerard Lambert came in, its function changed completely. Uh, we believe that later Bunny Mellon, but at the time, Bunny Lambert's newlywed days to Stacy Lloyd were spent living here and making a home and family here in this smaller home, but right next door to the big house. She was here able to have a wide panorama view of the gardens, the landscaping, the flowering trees, and the things that she loved very much. Having been an alumni of Foxcroft, she also could ride in and out. Well, thank you everybody for joining us us on this behind the scenes tour of Carter Hall. Um, as I said, this is one of the one of the most famous locations here in Clark County and in all of Virginia. And please be sure to tune in to both the Facebook pages of the Mosby Heritage Area Association and the Clark County Historical Association. Also visit our websites and our archives blog, the Clark County Historical Association. We've got a ton of online content we're developing for you guys. And this is great historical information for students who are being taught at home or just people who are interested in Clark County history. So be sure to check out both of our websites and Facebook pages and all our social media pages as well. And thank you for tuning in.